Well, good morning. Can you believe it's week seven and we just have one more week after this? But let's not get too too far ahead of ourselves. This week, we are talking about disciple-making structures. We want to talk about the discipleship funnel, which we also call the discipleship pipeline. And I want to talk for a few moments about assessing effectiveness. And that for that one, we're talking not about teacher evaluations the way we have in the past, but we're talking about the effectiveness of our structures. So we've been talking a lot about uh, over these weeks about uh, curriculum. We've talked about movement across the stages of faith, uh, the pieces that are necessary for that. Now we're going to look at some structure. If you remember talking or looking at, hopefully you've read Dr. Bill's article on, uh, what does he call this? On His article on structures, right? It's on uh, scalable organizational structure. But what I really want us to, to move into, what I really want you to be looking at is the the part about what we call fractals. It really picks up there on page 40, and you can see where he has pastor, invite, connect, send, and apprentice. If you don't know what I'm talking about, pause your video right now and go get the article printed out if that's what you need to do, at least starting at page 40. But don't think that you're off the hook for reading the whole of the article. So we'll pause for a moment. And now we're back with you. Well, this whole piece about fractals, let me talk about the way I was introduced to fractals. We were working with Bill Ezum and we were uh, heard about fractals. We heard about that from Wayne Cordero, who started number of churches down in, uh, down over in, uh, on Oahu in Hawaii and, uh, and uh, particularly in Honolulu. And before that, Bill have been trying to explain fractals to us and we weren't really grasping it. So when we sat down with Wayne Cordero, that first question of our church planning team was, what on earth is fractals? Can you help us to understand? Well, Wayne said, think about it as a tree. Fractals are these repeating patterns. If you know anything about math, then you probably have heard about fractals. Perhaps you've heard about fractals from snowflakes because snowflakes are, are fractals. They're these repeating patterns. Now, quite honestly, I don't see that in snowflakes, but maybe that's because they're just so small. But I do get trees. They're big and I can see those. So fractals and trees. You have roots and roots go into a trunk, right? And what do the roots do? Well, they give it grounding and and it also provides nutrients for the trunk. Where does the trunk go? It goes up into branches. And so what does the trunk carry and do? It has stability and it also is carrying nutrients out to those branches. And what happens from those branches? Limbs. So what do limbs do? They carry nutrients and uh, work for stability for what? the limbs and then you have the limbs and those do what they provide stability grounding right and and nutrients for the leaves now if you look at a leaf what do you see you see a vein and what does that vein do it provides some stability some balance for the whatever the rest of the leaf it provides nutrient for that right and then if you were to cut off the leaf and stick it in rooting mix or rooting material, rooting liquid, with some luck, you'll grow another leaf. And from that leaf, you'll grow more leaves and you'll uh, end up growing another plant. Now I realize I just switched my metaphors and you probably know by now I'm really good at mixing my metaphors. So at that point I was talking about a plant rather than a tree. I don't know if you can start a tree from leaves, but I do know you can do plants and that those are the same, same piece. So if you'll notice with that, each of these have the same function, right? They have the same function in their own little ways, but they look different. What fractals in the church do is provide for ministries that can expand and become multitudinous, but they'll all be rooted and grounded back into your mission, your vision, your values. Now, 
more than likely you don't have the ability, you're not in the position to do that for your full congregation, but you do within the realms of ministry with which you work. This week, well, in this class, we're talking specifically about Christian education and leader development. If now we go back to Dr. Bill's article, and a way I want to describe fractals to you, looking at this diagram that he has on page 40, he says that there are four core processes. We know that there are four core processes in the church. They're inviting, how do we get people into the church? Connecting, how do we keep people in the church, or uh, uh, yeah, grounded in the church? How do we apprentice or disciple? That's where we work with them so that they can uh, be connected and get ready to go out. Because what did Jesus do? He said, I send you. He said, go out into the world. And why is that? So that we can invite and that way we can connect apprentice and send. So everything we do in the church really needs to be grounded. It comes out, it needs to fulfill those four functions, invite, connect, apprentice, send. And when it comes to administration, to finances, I believe we've said this before, budget, finances, legalities, everything that's administrative, the, our, our building property committees, what is that? to do it's to support to be those roots to hold everything in place so that provide the the funds the mechanisms the structures so that we can invite connect apprentice and send now i'm holding this tangerine in front of you not because i'm hungry which I am, but not so I can eat in front of you, at least not at this moment. But I think that looking at fractals, or at least these four cores, could be somewhat like a tangerine. So I'm, gonna, I'm going to peel this tangerine, and, and you know what's underneath this, this peel, don't you? You know that there are these sections. Now, if you think about all of these sections, oops, and you see, we can divide these into four, can't we? Maybe we could do that. So there's one, there's two, there's three, there's four. So we went from our whole church focus <laughs> to having uh, invite, connect, apprentice, disciple, and sending. Now, let's see. I want to take, because really what we're wrestling, or not wrestling, but what we're resting on is this whole disciple piece so we're gonna we're gonna go there education is discipling is apprenticing right now you see there are four pieces here hopefully and a little tag all right so we have four yes and we're gonna think what are the four pieces that we want to rest on well again according to his diagram in apprenticing he has mentoring small groups, encouraging, I had to look at that one again, and leader development. Now I would do that, do that differently. You might too. I might do what we do in a lot of churches. We have preschoolers, infants and preschoolers. We have elementary, we have youth, and we have adult ministries. But we could look at it differently still. We could have ministries that are focused on, whoops, <laughs> we have ministries that are focused on moving people from being pre-Christian. We have Christian moving people to disciples. We have disciples ministries that are moving people to being missionaries and preparing to go out into the world, maybe to be apostles, maybe, maybe domestic missionaries, maybe missionaries within their own their own neighborhood, on their own block. Now, this is not going to work because this is a tangerine, but we're going to try it anyways. And we're going to spurt juice, I'm sure. Now, within each of those, let's take, let's take pre-Christian, for example. We will have, within that segment, four pieces, again. And I would propose that we do four pieces. They would be that children, or let's, uh, infants and preschoolers, elementary, youth, and young adult. Well, what we're doing within that is considering 
how do we move these segments from being pre-Christian to Christian? And then within the Christian, again, we'd have infants and preschoolers, elementary, youth, and adults. Does that make sense? So here we have our, our first segment, which is pre-Christian. We have hmm, infants and uh, preschoolers, elementary, youth, and adult. Now these fractals, because they're repeating, go on and on and on. So within the children, uh, let's, uh, within the preschooler, let's say, we would have, um, we would have a, something for the children, let's say. We would have parents who are going to be key, and how, let's say, in the parents' fractal, we might have how we prepare them to be better parents. We would have a spiritual aspect for that. Again, let's go back up the fractal to the to the infant's uh, care. How are we going to care for them? How are we going to help them uh, develop spiritually? So can you see what we're doing here? Four, 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 four. Now, I will tell you that it's often difficult to get the four, uh, that, that you work on three at a time. And what you're doing is searching for those people who will be on, on your course. So if you're working with the model that says we've got infants and preschoolers, we have elementary, we have youth, we have adults, then you want to have leaders for each one of, of these that you'll meet with. And you'll talk about what's happening together. How are we going to have a unified educational program or leadership program? What does that look like? What is our mission? When we work with the, and we'll work one on one as well with each one of these people. So when we're working with the infant and preschool person, we're going to say with them, work with them, what are the four areas that we want to concentrate on here? And then the next question is, who are the four leaders going to be? Who will be the coordinator? Who will be the liaison, the touch person for each one of those four areas? And then we'll encourage them to meet with those four on their team. Do you see what we're doing? One core piece. I don't have another tangerine. One core piece into four. Four into that would be 16, I think. But each core only works with four at any one given time. All right, so that's the fractals piece and how you can uh, put that back then into our, our programming. My guess is you're going to have questions about this, but I do know that you always let me know what your, your questions are, and they'll generate out of this week's discussion form question. Now, here's the next piece for us. What we want to do is get people into those mechanisms. So again, you should have your discipleship pipeline printed out. Uh, let's pause for a moment so you can make sure you have it. There you should be. All right. You can look at this pipeline. And what we're trying to do is get undiscipled people. This is what Bill Eason calls them undiscipled people. I have tended to call them uh, not yet Christian people, but I, I do like what he has to say about that, and that is that there are people, as we've talked about, that are in our churches, that have been in our pews for decades, that are still undiscipled. They just show up. So what we want to do is to get undiscipled people into the pipeline, into that funnel, so that they come out doing hands-on ministry. I'll say again, hands-on ministry and mission, so that they are missionaries. So we're going to get undiscipled people. We want to get them into this pipeline. And the way, key way we're going to do that is through transformational small groups. Now, a small, a transformational small group is one that really is exploring faith. They're ones that are interacting with each other. Small groups that give play, are, are places where people can ask questions, where they can wrestle with what's going on in their lives. It's not 
head, it is heart and it's spiritual that's going on in those small groups. So not standard small group. We want them into these in these transformational type small groups. Out of those, then we're going to find people that we can apprentice and we can do one-on-one -on -one mentoring with. These are the people that are ready to go to that next level, apprenticing and one-on-one -on -one mentoring. Uh, in this pipeline, then you see small group leader. I want to switch that. Bill E. talks about small group leader there, but it's really a ministry leader. Now, if you think of our your ministries as small groups, small group leader can work there. But these transformational small groups are our ministries. And so everything you do is should be a transformational small group. Your Oh, uh, let's see, your choir does work as a transformational group. You're praying together. You, you spend time learning together. You have a tech team. Your tech team meets together and does some study together and checks in with each other. You're talking about what you read in scripture the week before, what you're struggling with. And does that make your, that, 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 that makes your meetings, not meetings, but transformational type small groups. You're adding this layer into that. So a small group leader, if you think about it, is a ministry leader, a, a mission leader. You don't go out and just do mission. You you know why you're doing mission, right? It's to help people get into or not get, make a commitment to the kingdom of God. It, we're giving them opportunities to be missionaries on behalf of the church. Although missionaries, we do that on behalf of the kingdom. And what we do as the church on behalf of the church is meant to be on behalf of the kingdom to help bring people into relationship with Jesus Christ and to become all that God has created them to be. All right. So from small group leader, then you're really a radical disciple maker. And these radical disciple makers are those that are apprenticing and that are doing one-on-one -on -one mentoring. They're raising up other small group leaders, other ministry leaders, so that people keep moving into hands-on ministry. So we move from undiscipled people to trans in, and move them into transformational small groups, which may be transformational ministry uh, groups. Then out of that, we're looking for identifying apprentices and one -on people we can mentor one-on-one. -on -one. And then we're looking for small group ministry leader, transformational ministry leaders, that are then uh, becoming radical disciple makers, doing hands-on ministry, which is what raising up other people to be transformational ministry leaders. So we're doing rep repeating uh, processes. We're thinking in terms of fractals, moving people into this pipeline that allows for them to be fractal leaders good spiritually uh, adept, spiritually mature leaders. Now, how do we measure that? How do we evaluate our programs? Well, we're going to see, are we raising up leaders? How many leaders do we have that we can, that, that are multiplying ministries? Are our ministries multiplying? My guess is if you're uh, pastoring or leading in a typical mainline church that what you're going to find and maybe not just a mainline church if you're in a typical church you're gonna push back and say I can't even find four people what does that tell you that you have a structure that is not working and that you've got to get those three people or those two people into that pipeline, which means into a transformational small group, I would say that that is a group that you're going to meet with them, those two or those three people, meet with them on a one-on-one -on -one basis, mentor them, apprentice them, help them to take up a portion of those ministry. If you're looking at... Uh, infant, preschool, elementary, youth, adult, you may have to move those youth and, and children together. 
maybe 12th graders move those into adults, but you'll have to find appropriate adult places for them. Start, start to transition them up and over. And make sure that you provide that mentoring. Now, my guess is all of this sounds large and huge, and, and that's because you're already thinking out into all these four fractals. Just start with one. Just start with one. I want you to be thinking about that, th 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 all of this this week, to be looking at it, to be making it your own, because what this is going to feed into is your final paper. And if you haven't looked at your syllabus for a while, I want you to, to go ahead and do that. Next week, we're going to be looking at, uh, we're, well, we're going to talk more about raising up leaders, some of the caveats, the challenges. I uh, want you to be talking, we're going to be talking about what, what will hold you back. And out of that, out of this, out of all of this that we've been learning, there's your final paper. So make sure that you look on your syllabus, your final paper, and allow that to help guide what questions you may have kind into this week and, and looking at all of this. Well, again, I'm going to see you on that discussion forum. I know that you're going to have questions. I also know that you're going to ask those questions, that I know that it's going to be another great week. I love you all. I love what we're doing, and uh, I can't wait to see what God's going to do with, through, and for all of us this week. Don't forget, though, if you're going to have a successful week, you're going to have a good week. If you're going to have a week that is effective and sustain the ministry that you're called to, to do, if you're going to sustain, become all that God's creating you to be, or, or maybe not, well, yeah, to become, to move one step closer, you're going to have to do something nice for yourself. So do something nice for yourself, and I'll see you uh, over the next few days. Bye-bye.